ready to start. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second half of the first workshop of our 2017 Extraordinary Technology Conference. David Garraway is demonstrating abilities and the techniques to detecting etheric waves. So he's going to be continuing and we're going to be doing some Q&A here pretty soon and some hands-on demonstration. At some point he's also going to be assisted by John Fiala. And if, as a matter of housekeeping, when you come up to ask questions, if you could stand in the green box and go to the microphone, that would be great. Thank you very much. Take it away, David Garraway. All right, am I on? Test, test. One, two, three. Thank you very much. I appreciate your, your applause. It's wonderful to have people to talk to about this. And, and hello, hello, okay, we're, we're there. Right, okay, good, good. Uh, as I just demonstrated, the symbol is sanded in those fractal patterns uh, that describe where, where the ether bunches up in the spiral as it goes in. And what happens is it adds a wobble to the atoms of the surface of the symbol. So when you spin it, it actually, the, the atoms soak up a little more time space than the atoms of a normal symbol would. And when it stops spinning, it gives back a little bit of the time space that it soaked up. So you see it actually moving backwards just a little bit. So it's not an illusion, or it is an illusion. It's hard to say exactly what's, uh, what to call it, but it's a phenomenon that uh, I've observed. I did all kinds of experiments with these um, patterns. And uh, same with these mirrors. I uh, sanded these mirrors in those patterns. And this gentleman just had a, a dowsing uh, pendulum. And they went wild over these mirrors. I tried an experiment yesterday to see if they would gather more light outside. And it didn't go over that well. But I'm hoping today at the end of this con uh, t you know, talk, not conference, at the end of this talk, I hope we can go outside, throw these in a bucket of water, and see if the reflections aren't just a little bit brighter than they should be. Because these mirrors actually, in my experience, they help pull in photons, more light than usual. So, um, and that's what the symbol does. It pulls in a little more energy than usual. So is there anybody that hasn't seen me spin the symbol yet that would like to see it spin? Come on up, please. Because uh, it's, it's really hard to see. You've got to be next to it to see it. Actually, David, uh, uh, could we spin one, this one time without the audience uh, crowded around it so the cameras can get the shot? Oh, okay. You know, so, okay? Well, and uh, um, the, uh, yeah, the, what the, they can they look up on the screen there. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're not going to see it like this, though. You're going to need to change the, the contrast or something. Yeah, that might do it. All right, let's see if we can... Get the camera down a little bit, maybe. Okay, give it a shot here. This effect seems to happen a little better when the spinning is counterclockwise, too. Come on, come on, get back up there. So if anybody wants to see this up close and personal, I'd be glad to show it to you. I'll be here all five days, and I'd be glad to make one of these coils for you or discuss anything or show you how to make one of these symbols or mirrors or whatever. Whoa. Ah. Of course, when it's on camera, right? <sighs> okay. Okay. Let's see if that helps.
I've always thought it was interesting. It spins longer one way than it does the other. No. Yeah, it's subtle. It really doesn't come across on video. You, it'd have to be looking straight down on it. We can cheat on spinning it up to speed. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Let's go for it. Why don't, we try it. why don't we try it like on the ground in front of the camera? So. You think that might work? Better toys. I mean, power toys. Okay. You think that might work better? Yeah, try it counterclockwise. Oh, wow. Is it interfering with the camera? All right. Very nice. Thank you. Turn around that little metal thing because it's hard to, you know, it's going to slow it down a lot faster, isn't it? Yeah. I guess we could, but the angle's better on the camera. Yeah. Yeah, it's got an interesting video effect. Yeah, it's interesting how it oscillates on a video camera. Seems, oh. It seems to be interfering with it, too. Well, that's, uh, that's actually out the back side on the console there. That's where the interference is coming, but it's huh. after. Well, I've actually drawn uh, pictures of these coils on paper using those fractal numbers. And when I was done uh, drawing the pictures, when I crumpled up the paper and it caused static on a radio in the room. Uh, yeah, it is. Brass symbol. Huh. And you were telling me yesterday. Hmm. Cool. Thanks for telling me. I didn't know that. Even non-ferromagnetic materials will do that. Okay. Anything that's conductive will do that. If it can conduct an electron, anytime you move an electron, what also do you have? A magnetic field, right? Anytime you have a magnetic field that passes over a conductor, you get a movement of what? Electrons. So when there's one, there's the other. Anytime there's anything conductive, whether it's ferromagnetic or not, uh, uh, is uh, indifferent. So you think that field, that, that the magnetic field might be causing this distortion? On the, uh oh. Oh well. Let's see what happens. That's the first time I've used a drill or you've seen it use a drill. Now if you want to try it on that little metal plate, we could do that too. Is that a yes? Yeah, sure, let's try it there. Maybe try it right handed this time. All right. <laughs> wow, a little extra spin to it now. Billiards, anybody? <laughs> yes. Hmm. Now, you know what? That was an experiment. Mm -hmm. How many times did Tom and Elvis Edison experiment with the uh, carbon uh, combustion uh, uh, filament? Over a thousand, huh? Well, we learned new, one new thing about the experiments today. Don't play billiards in the middle of it. I mean, a uh, ballroom floor. No. It may stabilize somewhere in the, toward the end there. Yeah, hopefully. That is a weird phenomenon. You know, it normally doesn't do that. Really? No. Ah, oh, that plate is leaning at an angle. Hmm. 
That's what it is. That plate's not perfectly plumb. Good news. It's funny because it's a left-handed spin, but it's going to right, right around. Very musical. Wow. Yeah, a little bit, not much. Yeah, still, yeah. Uh, oh well. Of course, and again, Thanks. we put it on probably the worst possible surface we could imagine. Yeah. Huh. You know, it's somehow still, still work. Hmm. Go figure. Better than nothing. There you are. All right. So I guess I should get around to actually making one of these coils or showing how I do it. Uh, it's just a regular roll of solder and a measuring tape and a little masking tape and uh, <clears throat> these are the dimensions of so the first coil would be right left so this would be 8 and this would be 8.8 .8. and this one would be 13 here so the first uh, measurement would be 13, and then after this, I don't know if I'll make a whole one, because that would take a long time, but I'll start it. And then after this, I'll show you how I sand the, the, the mirrors and the symbol. And then we can go outside and see if I can do one last demo that might work today. I don't know. Let's see. I didn't have much luck yesterday. So this is measure out 13 inches, and then make a 90-degree bend. And then measure out 8.8. And bend that right. I mean, you're always going right at first here. And it pays to maybe mark it where it is. And rather than just make the loop, which you could, and you always want to fold it back over so it's going to wind up on this side, because you want to maintain as much tension uh, in your tensor as possible. But what you want to do is impart those fractal patterns to the loop. So you go right, right, right. And then you're bending it right, more right than left, so a little left than right. Then one, two, three, four, five left. Then one, two, three, four, five, six right. Then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, twelve left and one right. And then you do that same pattern left-handed, left, 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 right, left, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one. And then by the third time, you should make contact, right, 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 left, right, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one. And then up, oh, it it's getting lopsided, so now you want to Unbend it. You want them even as possible. Left, 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 right, left. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, nine, four, one, four, one. And there you have your loop. And I'm not really doing it right because you should twist as you bend too. It's kind of tricky though. So you make this all the way over, which of course will destroy your geometry and force you to go back and start uh, using that right-handed pattern again. Right, 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 
left, right, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Then you're going to be using your left-handed pattern. <clears throat> I need some water here. Uh, I can do this down here. Um, which would be left, 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 right, left, right. One, two, left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, left. One, two. And then one, two, three, four, four. One, 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 two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. And by the third time, you should be getting there. Left, 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 right. Uh, four left. One, two, three, four. Right, left, right. Left, left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And twelve. Okay, then. More measuring tape. Oh. I don't think I've ever done this before, anybody. And I didn't measure it out either, so I'm going to kind of start again here. This has to be 8.8, 10% longer. 8.8, here, okay. Anyway, B. Second pattern, which is four to the left, 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 right, left, right. One, two, left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right. One, two, left. Then right, 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 right. Left, right, left. Right, right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, left. Right, right. And one, two, three, four. One, two, six, seven, one, two. And it should come on this side here. And you want to go down again, 90 degree angle. And measure out eight. OK. And the second level is also right-handed. So make a 90 degree turn. Try to line it up with the first loop, first right-handed loop as much as possible. And then this is only five units long. So this would be five. And again, you want to do right, 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 left, right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Left, 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 right, left. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Right, right, right. Left, right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One. And it has to come on this side. I kind of blew that. You always kind of have to start over when you get it over on the right side here. So right, 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 left, right. One, two, three, six. One, one. And then measure out 5.5 .5 on this side. So I don't think I'll do this entire coil here because it'd take me all day. It takes a couple hours really to make a good one. 5.5. And try to get it level. And then the left-handed one is left, 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 right, left, right. Left. Five, six, seven, one, two, one, two, one, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. And here. And you can also go backwards to get the other waves, too. So you can go 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, right, left, right, left, 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 right, 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 left, right, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2. 
And finally, you bend it down again. And then the final one down here, this will be just five. Well, I think you guys get the general idea here. I don't want to take up all your time doing this. But um, if you want me to show you how to make one, I mean, would anybody want me to go on with this any longer? <laughs> or is he seen enough? That's what I thought. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So that's how you make a coil, basically. You measure out the Fibonacci series, and you impart those twistings as you go along. On this side, it's 3, 1, 1, 5, 6, 12, 1. And on this side, it's 4, 1, 1, 1, 2, 7, 2. And as long as you're twisting and bending with these fractal numbers in mind, you're resonating with the imploding ether waves, and you'll help catch them. And it takes quite a while. I mean, I could stand here all day and do this, and it would take me an hour to make one good coil. <coughs> as far as the symbol goes in these mirrors, these are much more easily done with those patterns. Basically, you sand the mirror, start on the chrome side. The idea is to take the paint off and a little bit of the chrome, but not all of the chrome. So you go right in, right, right, then left out, and right in, and one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, in. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, out, then in. Can you, can you move that over just a little bit so it shows up on the big screen while you're doing it? Oh, okay. Hey, wonderful. Yeah, move that, move that felt marker, yeah, and just do it right there. Okay. And then left-handed pattern, one, two, three, four. And the idea is to use a battery and a magnet inside your sandpaper so you get a little bit of current flow going. And it'll impart the wobble to the atoms in the chrome much better. So there is a battery with magnets in here. <clears throat> and you want to use both the left and right patterns. So you view left, 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 right, left, right, left, left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, left, left, then right, 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 left, right, left, right, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <sighs> and to get the best results, you might wind it up a little bit before you go right. So if I'm using a right-handed pattern, you might wind it up a little like that, and then go right, 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 then wind it up left, and go left, wind it right, go right, and then left, left, two, four, five. And so by winding it up, you're wobbling the atoms in the sandpaper, and you're getting more rotation. And then unwind it, one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, that's how it's done. And you just do that for like an hour or so. And uh, you can make a mirrored surface or a symbol, just like that. It'll catch ether waves. And uh, any questions? Yeah, are those uh, by filer? Are those by filer coils? By filer. Uh, well, you do the patterns both ways. Yeah, you start it right, left, right. You know, you do the pattern like this one is. Right three, left one, right one, then five, left six. And you start it over again, you do it, you start left. So yeah, you do that both is, the patterns left and right. That is by filer, because you have two opposing fields Some portions out. of it are by filer, some are not. That's producing scalar waves, basically, or cohering scalar waves. That's it, yeah. Totally. So you have, really, you're, you have four different wave forms. You have two right-handed forms and then two left-handed forms. And then if you do them backwards, you do those both left and right. Like I said, we're basically trying to harvest the right in waves and the left out waves. That's what these forward patterns do. So I basically stick to the forward pattern left and right, right sided, and the forward pattern left and right, left sided. But occasionally, like one out of every five times, I'll get bored and I'll try to catch the other waves by going backwards. I'll go one, you know, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, then six in, and then five out, and then one in and three out. So that way, eventually, you're getting all the soup, you know, hopefully, in your uh, equation. 
But if you, you know, it's very labor intensive and very time consuming and whatnot. So basically, although I should probably evenly do them all, I basically go right in and left out. And that produces the best results for me. So, but I'm glad you brought that up because you know, I very rarely go backwards when I should a good deal of the time. I think those also could be used for healing. Definitely, yeah. I think these coils, like I say, um, capture the right-handed force a lot more than the left-handed force. And that is the force of healing. And it, it will accelerate healing. And in plant growth, as I showed that lentil experiment does, and uh, I think there's a lot of potential in that. I'm going to have to start doing a lot more biological experiments. I'm working with an acupuncturist, and um, she has put needles on the end of these, you know, attached electrodes to needles, put them on the other end of this coil, and done acupuncture with them, and reported really good results. The patients get tingly sensations and stuff like that. So I think it really does uh, capture chi and channel, you know, energies like that. So uh, I think there's a lot of potential in this. I know my presentation is a little clumsy. I'm getting tired, and it's hard to do these on, you know, in front of people because it makes me nervous. I've never done one in front of a crowd before. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your patience. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to talk about them, though, because you um, get some really interesting results. And uh, any other questions? The more the merrier. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering about your Lagrangian. And mm -hmm. does that compare to like a block wall and a magnet? Is that, you know, the block wall and the magnet where you got the center where the spins flip? Mm -hmm. your, your Lagrangian, the video, you mean? Yeah, your, your Lagrangian field. Um, you explain your Lagrangian field? Oh, well, the Lagrange walls, I call yeah, them. Because yeah. there's a Lagrange point between any two planets, for instance. Okay. But there's a field, there's like a wall between any objects, like between here and here, there's a point here, and then between here and here, you could, you know, draw a line from this point to this point, and then a line from this point to this point. You could draw lines between any two objects all over the place. So the wall is very convoluted. It would be between you and you okay. uh, on this plane, and it would be between this and the, and the solder on this plane. So, and of course it's between this and any air molecule too. So the walls surrounding things are all dependent on what's surrounding the thing. So there's a wall that surrounds you, but it's all dependent on the person sitting next to you and, you know, the wall in the corner of the room and where the mic is and stuff like that. So it's a very convoluted envelope, and it's constantly changing. If one thing moves, the entire shape of the envelope changes. Okay, I was just wondering if that could be compared to a block wall and a magnet. You know where you got the center, but maybe, maybe. I think so. Probably, you know, it, 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 it apply to magnetic fields too. I think, and electrical, yeah. And what, are the, what were you trying to do there with the symbol? What were you trying to demonstrate? I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that. Well, I can show you later. It just soaks up a little time space, and then it gives it back when it stops, and you can see it reverse direction after it stops. It radiates out, you know, a little time. It goes back to where it was. <laughs> 